you join me at a very exciting new day ticket complex just south of Lincoln. Last winter alone, over 2,000 new carp were stocked into here. It's six lakes spread over 180 acres. Welcome to Embryo Norton Disney. Summon on. Double bite. Couple of years time, this is gonna be ridiculous. There's so many dark scaly fish. Imagine these at like up to 30s, 40s. Go on, son. Go on. What's happening? It's away. Hiya. First one from Norton Disney, get in. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. What a place this is. Boom! Yeah, buddy. It's a scaly banger. Mate, that's the one. The first two lakes on the complex to open are Pettit's, which has got only 13 swims on 16 acres, and Billy's with 23 swims on 27 acres. Both lakes are up and down like an egg box, making the fishing really varied and really interesting. The big difference is the stocking levels. Pettit's is aimed at the big fish angler with 200 fish to low 30s, and Billy's is the runs water with 900 fish between low doubles and 30 pounds. Billy's Lake in particular has got quite a lot of fish in it. Uh, we're expecting lots of action during this session. Uh, even though it's only been sort of six, maybe four to six weeks since the Spons Angler Social, it's matured a hell of a lot down here. I know the guys from Embryo and the fishery managers have been working so hard to try and get all the pegs done. Every swim's got their own bit of water, so you never get people squabbling between them in the separate swims, casting over each other and things like that. The weight setup is absolutely spot on. Conditions today, Got a lovely wind pushing into where we're fishing. Uh, it's actually an area where I fished on the Angler Social as well. Um, it looks absolutely prime for it, and I'm sure between me and Lodge, we'll get amongst the fish. My expectations for the session, I'm fishing with James, although James is one of my good mates. I don't get to fish with him that often. We do two completely different styles of angling, and we've both got busy lives, but for us to be able to get two or three or four days in with each other, it's just going to be a bit of a laugh, really. It is basically like a relationship. We fall on our left, right and centre, um, I've noticed when he got here, he's already done his nails, he's had his highlights put in, he's looking very very prim and proper, bless him. But uh, I'm hoping that over the week I'll teach him a few lessons, get one over on him, because that's basically what I'm here to do. He is going to tell you some things about me which aren't true, so don't listen to a word he says. I have to him laughing in the background. So yeah, he has, he's, he's got all my leads at the minute, I've set him up, he's on a bit of a tutorial, he's on a bit of a downwards roll at the minute, he hasn't really caught much, so he's got me in really to, um, to help him out and guide him slightly, so all, all jokes aside, I am genuinely really looking forward to this session, I think we will definitely put a few fish on the bank. These fish at the minute aren't really pressured, there's not many anglers fishing the lake, so they're acting normally. So big old pit, nice wind, they want to be on the end of it. So what I've done, I've located a couple of spots down the bottom of the marginal shelf, just at six and seven wraps, One's fairly sizeable and one's a little bit smaller. So on the bigger one, I've gone with two rods over about 15 spawns of the pellet. I'm using pellets because that's what the fish are getting fed. So it makes sense for me to use those at the minute. On the other spot, it's a much smaller spot, but I've got a single rod on there just off to the side. When we arrived at this lake, there was actually fish showing in real close. And at the minute, they've not really seen that much angling pressure. So they are coming right up the marginal shelf. So you've got to fish where the fish are. Now, secondly, my tactics are going to be fishing that drop off so I'm fishing seven wraps and there is a little bit of weed down there. It is patchy and I'm fishing in clear holes in it at the minute. Now, with that said, the tactic I'm going to go in with is solid bags. Now, I've used solid bags for the last 12 months. Absolutely love them and to be honest with you, I haven't really cast anything else out or filled the need to. But in this situation where I'm not sure what my lead's going to be landing on, it's just going to ensure that I'm presented over the top of it 100% every single time. I will chop and change throughout the session, but that's what I'm going to go over to start with and see how it goes. All sorted. Loz, so I'm thinking, let's have a wager. What are you saying? I'm going to say biggest fish. 
I like to say, say biggest fish and not numbers fish because we both know how that's going to go. Yeah, it won't be numbers. Yeah. Absolutely not. Got to give yourself a bit of a chance, haven't you? You've already won the award, award for uh, worst haircut anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm game. Let's do it. Sam. Sam. Katie and I thought we'd leave the smash up fish into the other two, knowing Loz for one would be in his absolute element. Pettit suited both of us more anyway, with lower stocks and bigger fish. And with this being my biggest fisheries project to date, I was super keen to see how much they'd grown. With the lakes due to open in just a few weeks, we didn't need to rush into swims, so we spent a lot of time looking before deciding where to start. So when I arrived to the lake this morning, the sun was literally just creeping over the trees and it was looking so epic and I was so excited about just getting out of the van and having a wander around. Um, I ended up doing a few laps of the lake and I, found, I feel like I found the body of the fish in the, this area that I'm planning on fishing now. Um, Dan and I sh saw quite a few shows out here so we're both sort of trying to fish for the same pack of fish which hopefully will be a good result and I'm just looking forward to getting a rod out and having a feel about and finding some spots. Donk. Lovely. Right, let's see how deep it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a bit. Okay, that's just on the upslope. So it's taken a long time to get to this point. It's sort of middle of the day now, and I've been casting around for two, maybe three hours. Um, not ideal if there's loads of fish around, but fortunately this morning, the fish were showing down the middle strip, uh, probably 110, 120 yards. So I'm fishing at just about 80, so they're well beyond where I'm casting to. So I'm not so worried about spooking them. And um, you know, if I was in a corner and there was loads of fish showing, I might have just flicked three rods out of pop-ups on to try and get a bite. But because the fish are out in open water, they seem fairly well spread. I'm really interrogating the swim, finding a good spot now. We're here for a good few days, and I'm hoping that once we start to introduce bait, then the fish will keep coming back to the spots and we'll get more and more bites. Um, so at the very beginning, all I did was cast out just a lead on the end of the marker rod. So I've got braided line on the marker line, um, which feels so much more because there's no stretch in it. And just one of the pronged marker leads is what I started with, but that was collecting too much weed. So after a couple of casts, I looped to loop that off, just put a standard probe marker lead on and started casting that around to feel what it was like on the bottom. I wasn't really worried about the depth at that point. Um, I just wanted to know where was clear. And um, basically I've got a decent sized clear area out there all at the same range. Um, and I cast where Mark, the, the fishery manager, explained he'd had bites from. And um, being a new lake to me, you know, I never fished it before, never fished this swim before. You know, if you can get advice from somebody that has been successful on here, then that is a proper leg up. So I went around the sticks, 20 wraps, found actually that it wasn't super clear there. And I pulled a bit more line off, went slightly further, and it was clear there. Maybe it's because Mark was casting from the very front of the swim and I'm slightly back, so I can cast down the side of my bivvy. So I repeatedly cast just with the lead on the end of the line to feel what it was like. And um, basically where I've cast now is right on the slope. So it basically comes off a bit of gravel and goes onto some clay or to some mud or something. So it's, um, it's less sort of firmer thud, but it's still clear. Um, so once I'd cast, I don't know, maybe 20 times, I put a little bit of marker elastic around the line at 20 and a half wraps, which is where the clear area seemed to be. And I pulled another three quarters of a rod length off and kept casting beyond it just to see if the spot, how big it was, or if it got deeper, or if it got weedier behind it. Um, and it felt like, just by counting the lead down, it felt like it was about the same depth, but it was weedy beyond it. So I knew that range was where I wanted to have my hook baits. Once I'd done all that, loop to loop the lead off, put a full marker float kit on, and then put it out there to see what the depth is in all three spots where my rods are gonna be. And the middle rod and the left hand rod are, are on more gravel, um, and it's about eight foot deep there. The right hand rod, is not quite as hard but still clear in, in nine foot so I would imagine there's some sort of hump out there and I'm fishing two on the top of it and one off to the side of it and while I was doing all that a fish showed just short of that dot island out there and because there's nobody here at the moment 
Um, I've cast a rod towards where the fish showed. It must have shown in about a foot of water. There's a really severe bar there. So I've come this side of it and basically cast around, cast around, and I found a lovely firm bit about seven foot deep. It's not gravelly, it's not bumping along, it's just smooth on the bottom. Uh, and that's another spot that I can put a bait on later in the session. So say I get a bite out there later on today or tomorrow and I don't want to put the rod back out because I'm worried about spooking fish, I can put a rod down onto that spot as well. I'll put some bait there too um, and I can have two spots going. And it may be that ends up a lot more fish are down there and I'm catching my fish off of that spot. Um, but basically I'm reacting to what I'm seeing, where the fish are showing. I'm really interrogating the swim at the start, so I know exactly what I'm fishing on. There's nothing worse than getting two days in, you've not had a bite, you're pulling weed in, then your head goes and you start markering to death then. It's better to do it at the very beginning of the session, know what you're fishing on, and then hopefully the bites will just get better and better and better. So um, that's the spot, um, let's get some bait in. about 20 spoms out, just a medium sized spom um, at the start of the session. There's a couple of hundred fish in here and a lot of them are young hungry fish and um, again the, the fishery managers have said they've tried fishing bags for them when they've been out in the middle and not really done any good and when they've put bait out, bearing in mind they can only do nights because they're working every day, when they've put bait out they've actually had bites um, you know, uh, fairly quickly after putting the bait out. So I'm spreading all the bait along the same sort of clear area. And what I've basically done, I've put about 15 out um, actually on the spot. And what I'm doing now, I'm just gonna put half a dozen out beyond the spot. So I've let a little bit of line off or out of the clip um, after putting a little bit of uh, marker elastic round to mark the actual distance of the spot and I've re-clipped it so a bit of marker elastic is about six foot off the tip of the rod and I'm drop just dropping a little bit of bait beyond the spot just to spread it out a little bit. I don't want it all just dropping in one area. Um, I think it can get a bit congested with the fish coming in and I think if it's spread out you know they can eat the bait at the back of the spot, be nowhere near the line and just gradually bring themselves onto the spot, get more and more confident. The more bait they've eaten before you get a bite, the better. Um, and then um, once they're really feeding, hopefully there'll be a pack of them out there and um, I'll keep picking them off. And uh, the bait is um, the pellet that's been fed in here all the way through the summer. The fish went in, in over the winter, um, just gone. So that'll be January, February, March time um, in different drops and uh, they've had sort of six months in here now and they've been getting fed all summer on this pellet so they are really conditioned into that pellet and when the complex is actually open that pellet is going to be available to buy and to use for the normal paying customers and I'd really recommend you get on that. When fish get really attuned to a type of food you want to be having that in your mix because they're so used to it. And I've just combined it with Link Boilie, which is my favourite summer boilie. Got complete confidence in that. And again, if you're coming somewhere new like this, come with a bait that you've caught loads of fish on before. So I've just blended both of those up um, in the food processor just to make the job that little bit easier. Mixed them together about half and half boiled up some lake water and put that over the top of it. And what that does is it activates the whole thing. The warmth and the water just starts to bring everything to life. Um, and it just looks that bit more carpy when it's sitting in the bucket. You can just imagine it going down onto the bottom, creating a big cloud as it goes down, loads of smell in the water and drawing them fish in. And when you're fishing on a longer session like this, you know, you want to be thinking about trying to draw fish back into your area. You know, if, like I said earlier, if I was fishing in the corner and I was just flicking out hook baits or maybe putting a few boilies out with a throwing stick, it would be completely different to this. Um, this is about establishing a baited area and then getting more and more takes as the session goes on. So I'm going to put three or four more out of the back of the spot, um, leave the area completely alone. I'm not going to cast in for a few hours and just watch the fish's reaction to that bait. So the first thing I've done getting into the swim, I managed to have a conversation with one of the guys that looks after this lake and he advised a few, a few areas that have been producing fish because some of the bailiffs get to fish here which is one of the perks for them and I've managed to find quite a nice big spot at about 16 and a half wraps. It's sort of quite gravelly but sort of shallow silt which is nice. Um, so I'm going to fish two rods over there and then there's two other spots that I'm toying between which are also sort of gravelly spots which I think, you know, the fish have been caught from there before, they, you know, it makes sense for me to have a go with those spots to start with. 
that I'm going to put probably about half a dozen spawns on each spot just to see if I can get the fish to the area. They're not far from where I'm going to be fishing so I want to try and entice them into that, into that space and the fact that they're regularly fed on pellet it makes sense to fish with it. Back over on Billy's, the pack of fish had definitely found their baited areas. What? what come on. I don't know what happened there. Catfish. Yeah. No. Bit thirty pounder then weighs us, doesn't it? Does it come on? Yeah. No. What is this fish doing? Uh, you haven't felt one for a while, mate. What's up with you? There's no wonder you don't know what to do with it. You've all tin top bins, you. I told you, mate, it's what you want. It's where you want to look at. It's where you want to look at, mate. Top lip. Here you go, straight <laughs> in. <laughs> Off it is. Fourteen pound. Oh, it won't be so bothered though, but fourteen four. Four and four. You did say five though. Are you trying to piss and out? They could, it, mate. That could make there. that could make all the difference. Yeah, it feels great to get off the mark so quickly. To be honest, um, nice thing look, bait just off the side of where we're baited, and it's gone within about ten minutes. And now Eliza's is messing about the bobbins because he's an idiot. Mate, when you up one of them good ones, that look. What are you doing? Are you having a complete laugh? I know you want your 20 quid youth, but come on. <laughs> You've got issues. <laughs> oh, it's kicking off now. That's the fifth bite. I think about two hours fishing. Nice. It's got a load of weed up the line. In the net. Lovely. Couple of crackers on it, mate. They'll do, won't they? Yeah. I think, uh, I think we've both made tactical changes, haven't we? Yeah, I think it started to work as well. Obviously, them lost fish for me, and you've had lost one yourself. Bit of a sink, and uh, just put a couple of fish on the bank. So, yeah. hopefully, put a few more on the bank this afternoon, mate. Fingers crossed, mate. Yeah. That's close, mate. 15 3. Yep. I'll go, yeah. Check out the scale patterns on him. Came to another change of tactic. This time on the rig front, single hook baits instead of solid bags. I've run out a little bit longer to where I saw fish as well, and he came literally probably two or three minutes after spotting out. So the change has worked. Let's just hope this is a sign of things to come. Well, landed five, lost four. So we're back on the plus side of things now. So it's definitely working. Time for one more before dinner. Loz is a master of big hit fishing, so when the fish turn up, it's never just one bite. The secret to maximising the number of takes you get is preparation. Having the bait made up and ready to spod and getting wrapped up in super quick time all work towards getting the rods back out as soon as possible, which turns one fish into many. On Billy's, a pack of more than 100 fish could turn up on you in one go. So having plenty of fresh rigs and the energy to use them is absolutely key. So, first day, how do you reckon it's gone? It's gone well mate, yeah, I think we've, uh, we can take a lot leading forward into the session. Mm. Uh, I think we definitely had to work hard for it. Bites, to, to begin with, weren't... They weren't as quick as we nah, thought. Not by any stretch of the imagination. I think um, you've definitely shown the way forward this morning with the spinners. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that you started 
on that. Yeah, not the bags. I went on with the bags yeah. because. I think if we'd have both been on bags, we'd have both probably been scratching our head for a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So that was a that was a definitely good move. And then obviously me changing over to the spinners this afternoon. Yeah. That for me is now the way forward. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I think your six seven wrap spot. Is yeah, for it's you. still doing the bits. So yeah. it's just obviously losing a fair few early doors, just making that hook a little bit smaller and not sharpening it or not using the camera core. It's just it definitely helped put them on the bank after that. So it's definitely the right yeah. move. I think you're going to stick on that spot now. Yeah, I think so. But get yeah. some bait in there tonight and then go again in the morning, yeah. I think. I, you know, there's nothing really to change for. Still, I'm still getting bites, so mm. it's definitely got quiet in the last hour, but I think the fish have probably cottoned on to your nose ring and they've just, like, backed off a bit. You know what? We you were having a lovely chat here, right? And you've had to take it one step to far again, haven't you? I've had to, really, haven't hey, I? <laughs> It's the morning of day two and I've actually started fishing now. I know it sounds crazy not to fish um, on your first night on a new lake, but I just wanted to watch and just see what happened. Put that bait out yesterday on the two different spots, kept an eye on it all day, didn't see anything over it at all. And um, a few fish showed on the far side of the lake yesterday evening. So I went round there just with a marker rod and had a cast around just with the lead on the end, just to see if it's clear out there where the fish were showing and what the rough depth was. So I've got another swim logged in the memory banks. So if the fish do carry on showing over there, I can move over there. But this morning, the fish have been out in the middle as they were yesterday morning, sort of spread all around really. They're not in one big pack, which is what we've seen them in the past. That's what they've been like. So their behavior is definitely changing. Um, but I have seen some fish on this side of the lake, still sort of in the middle, probably 30 yards behind the area. Um, and that was good enough for me. What I did was put four bombs out on the long area at just over 20 wraps. I'd rather scare the fish away with bait rather than rig. So if you put a few bombs out first, pure pellet, because the boys on the other lake have been catching over pure pellet. Um, I thought I'd do that first and then put both the rods out. They both went out absolutely sweet as a nut. And again, I've changed the rigs. I was going to fish sticks out there with little wafter hook baits, little barrels, but I've changed over to like a 12 mil pop-up on my favourite spinner rig, on a helicopter rig, really easy to cast that accurately and feel it down. I know it's super clear out there where both those rigs have landed and it's really just following the lead of the other guys. James has been getting lots of bites on yellow, so I've put yellow on every rod. The little IB pop-ups just soaked in isotonic goo. I've caught loads of fish on that before. And then the third rod has been cast up to the area where I saw a fish show yesterday and some fish were heard there last night. Some of the guys walking around the lake in the dark heard some fish show right on that spot where I put the bait. So again, I put a few spawns out just in case there's any fish around, spook them away with a bait, get the rig out there pretty clean. Took me a couple of casts to do it, but I'm really happy with where it's gone. We'll give it today in this swim and see what happens. If they keep showing in other parts of the lake and nothing happens out over that bait, then I'll definitely contemplate a move. Oh yes. I've only gone and done it. Lodge will not be happy with that. That's £17.6. Morning, mate. Morning, mate. Go on then, son. How big? I've got a bit of bad news for you, mate. What's that then? £17.6. I am, I am genuinely pleased for you because you, you were down a bit last night. After <laughs> so what happened? I basically turned my cat back to front this morning. No, show a bit more forward. That's it. Yeah, basically, as much as I can. Sorry, bud. Well, <laughs> he's had to go. Hopefully, whatever is on the end is not bigger than this one. Let's get it back. That's the first common of the session. Not quite beating the £17.6 mark, but all the same, it's a lovely carp. So yeah, 
Still got work to do. Back over on Pettits, the spot I saw a fish show on yesterday has produced the first bite of the session, and it was completely out of the blue. Oh, it's going to weed. I don't even know if it's still on. I think it is. I'll try and net it down there. There she is. Go on, Katie, get it. Double bite. Double bite. Come on, get in that net. First one from Norton Disney. Get in. Thank you, my love. <laughs> How about that? I'm crazy. Double bubble. Well, I was contemplating a move. Um, it was bothering me that those fish were showing out in open water really long. I hadn't seen anything over the bait. And uh, two separate spots roared off in quick succession. These are both on uh, little tiny pop-ups after swapping over to um, what James had his bites on over on Billy's and uh, just putting out pure pellet, no boilie at all. The fish are so switched on to this pellet now. So it's just a case of learning from what the other anglers are, are doing and switching onto that. Just dipping the tip of the rod in the water, it's sort of a bit of a habit, something I got off of um, my right hand man at called a Damien. And uh, you just follow the line up to where the fish is so you can see whether it's kiting left or right. There he is on the surface out there. Right, let's try and keep him away from the other line. Right, as with all fish, he's swum underneath the other rod now. So I've got to pass it back the other way. Kick the ant reverse on. A bit of weed, I thought it'd come off then. Steer him away from this tree. Mm -hmm. 20, I think. Right, go on, girl. Yes, get in ya! <sighs> Showing us how it's done, Dan. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. How about that? My first ever embryo Norton Disney carp. 18 pounds on the button, this one absolutely nailed on that size four wide gate bee and spinner rig. And um, I'm sure this is the first of many from this complex for me. It's been a very long time coming. The amount of work the boys have done around the site is absolutely monumental. We only bought it eight months ago. So uh, the fact they've transformed these two lakes into fisheries already, with the others coming online soon after, is pretty impressive. But uh, not as impressive as this guy. Look at the scales on that. Imagine that when it's 30 pound and it won't be long. Oh, only just 20 pounds, four ounces. My first Norton Disney 20, wicked. Yeah, man, check that out. What an absolute perler. Just over the magical 20 pound barrier, you can just see from the shape of this fish, it's gonna get massive. It's the same age as the one I caught previous, and they all went in here sort of 15, 16 pound in February, and this is just a greedy pig. Um, so he's put five pound on already. A couple of years time, I reckon it'll be a 30. But uh, what a lovely, lovely carp. I am well chuffed. Right, little kissy, and off you go. 
The boys on Billy's were still bickering like an old married couple. Hashtag standard for these two. But that didn't stop them fishing super hard trying to get one up on each other. Accurate casting with super efficient rigs and baiting to match kept the bites coming thick and fast. On Billy's it really is all about work rate when the fish are on you. 17 pounds. Don't say five ounces, I think we'll it in. 10 ounces. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, mate. Well, I've had my rods out for a few hours today, literally. Cast them back in with five minutes. This one's gone and it's got me the 20 quid back. 17 pounds, 10. And uh, yeah, four ounces bigger than salmon. So I'm back in the lead. Let's see what the afternoon brings. As I've already mentioned, I've made a lot of changes this session. And for me, when you go fishing, it's all about tying the piece of the jigsaw together to get an end product where you are catching fish on a consistent basis. So at the start of the session, I use my Ever Faithful Solid Bags. Now, James started on a completely different tactic. He started on single pop-ups. I started on bags. And if you'd have asked me at the beginning of the session, which one do you think would have produced the most bites? I'd have put my life and everything I own on those solid bags working. Now, with that said, it did produce some bites for me. However, the first five or six, I did lose a majority of them. So I probably only landed one or two. And what I think was happening was because I'd got smaller items within the bag, such as micro pellets, salmon fry crumb, mainline spot and PVA pellets, I had a 10 or 12 mil wafter in with them. And I think they were feeding on the bag contents and that hook bait and that wafter just, just caught them in an unnatural place. And obviously when I've connected or they've gone through weed and I've, I've had to give them a bit, it's, it's just pulled the hook out. So I'll give James his due. He started on the single hook baits and he was getting bites. He did drop a couple, but it, it was evident straight away that he wasn't losing as many. The last couple of months I have been playing about with the spinner rig, and this is my sort of version of it. So the hook link material itself is the 20 pound camo. I've used that braid for the last couple of years and it is perfect. It's supple enough to sit over any debris on the bottom when your lead falls, but it's also when you steam it that it goes bulk straight, which gives you great anti-tangle purposes. Now at one end, I've got a figure of eight loop that's going to attach to the hybrid leg clip. And to cover that, I've got a dark matter anti-tangle sleeve, which has got tungsten in it, again, helping everything to pin down. Now, to the other end, I've attached it to a spinner swivel, and the hook link at the minute is around six inches long. Now, I am fishing in weed, but I'm choosing the gravel spots in between, and it is really clear on those spots. So six inches fine and presentable. If I was fishing in silt, or the weed was a little bit more problematic, I'd probably lengthen it to probably eight or 10, or maybe even 12 inch, depending on the situation. Now to that, I've got a size four curve shank hook. A curve shank is my number one choice pattern when I'm using pop-ups with a straight point. And at Norton Disney, we have got a barbless rule. To that, I've got a kicker. Now it's a medium yellow kicker that I've got on, the, on this rig at the moment. And people always say to me on social media, do you think the color of the kicker matters? And to me, the always answer is no. Now for me in the winter, I like using maggots inside my solid bags. And depending whether that's red or white maggots, I might use that color kicker. Here I'm using yellow, pink, and red pop-ups. So again, I'm matching the color kicker to it. I've got a kicker fetish. What are you gonna do about it? I absolutely love them. Well, literally just lost one on the left-hand rod. Went out in the boat and it had cut me off in the weed. Literally, you know, without me even knowing. So, uh, I know I've got to pull harder. I don't know about the weed and the snags out in front of here, um, but I'm keeping the rod low in order to try and keep the fish up in the water. Just gonna have to see, learning a new swim and where the weed beds are. It's quite around to the left now. You know, you get a fish get in the weed like that and you lose it, you just know that next time you've got to pull harder and steer them in another direction. So really I've just got to learn the swim. Let's see how we go. There we go. Got a big lump of weed around its head now. Just keep it moving. I think there's still a fish there, but I'm not sure. Yeah, there is, there is, there is, there. Oh! He's just got free of all of that. Come on, get in that net. Bosh, got him! Oh, that was a bit hairy. Yeah man, look at that. An absolute perler again. 
19 and three quarters. I'm sure it'll be 20 pound in about 10 minutes, the way these ones are feeding. Great big shoulders. And the shape and scaling in these things now is just absolutely awesome. And I'm sure this one is gonna be a big carp as well. I know I'm saying that about all of them, but the ones that went into Pettits were hand-picked. So we put 150 of these in that were sort of 14 to 16 pound. And then we put another 50 fish in um, from a lake down on the Isle of Wight uh, called Rookley Park that was shutting down. And uh, basically a lot of their bigger fish, um, 20s and 30s went in here as well. And um, they're not gonna grow as fast as these guys because they're so young, um, but they will all get big one day. So uh, more success on the little isotonic pop-ups and um, no rods in the water at the moment. We need to get some more spots out, get the rods back out and see if we can catch a few more. Give you a little kissy. Mwah. Thank you, my darling. I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't want to don't want to lose this fish. Been a long time coming. Got wiped out by a family of swans earlier. So I had to redo my rods. And maybe that was a blessing in disguise. Looks like this one's never been hooked before, so it's just going absolutely berserk. grating so it's more than likely in weed but I'm just going to keep pressure on it oh no the joys of fishing in the rain when you haven't got your raincoat on <laughs> beauty. First fish of the session. Caught it from 16 and a half wraps to a really lovely smooth gravelly spot with a little bit of silt on it. Put probably about 20 spawns of pellet which they're being fed at the moment and also some crushed boily. Fished a spinner rig with a milky toffee pop up and yeah what a result. So pleased to get the first one anyway. God. Catching up with Dan now. He's got to get a bigger one. Thank you very much. Oh. What's happening? That's it's away. Oh my God. Chaos. Oh, it's away. Oh, it's away. Where are you? Gilly is here. Thank you. Well, it's a beautiful linear, isn't it? It is. Beautiful. Getting that net, getting that net. Woo! Bosh! Going Boom! Back. Well yeah, done. buddy. It's a really nice car. Yeah, though. it's stunning. Big, big scales on it. What a beauty. Stop talking. Sorry. Stop talking. And just lift the tail slightly. That's it, that's better. Nice. 
Good work. That is nice. a really lovely carpet. Isn't it? Really lovely. That's the one. <laughs> Go on, son. Go on. If you want to eat on that, Chris. That's it. After watching Loz carve it up yesterday afternoon this morning, margin spots dried up, so not stupid to an extent. So went longer, 80 yards, found a nice spot. Within 10 minutes on the rods out, double take, this being the better of the two. Okay. How's that for you, though, mate? Mate, they're bangers, aren't they? Proper, mate. What a place this is. Mate, a couple of years' time, this is going to be ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So many dark, scaly fish. Imagine these at like upper 30s, 40s as well. Nice, now. Nah. Yeah, be even nicer, proper, aren't they? they? Yeah. You know what I have noticed though today? What's that? Mate? You started catching more once you got your go faster stripes out. Please with yourself. I am, mate. Please yourself now you got your line out. I had to, you didn't I really? that at 9.30 this morning. Yeah, and but it's all about it it's all about timing and delivery, mate. No, it's not. You can't Google something and then use it when they play camera. <laughs> Stupid fault. Come on, get in that net. Bosh, got him. Oh, that was hairy. Well, how about this for another absolute perler? Look at that. 19 pounds on the button, proper long one, this one and uh, loads are growing in it, as they all have. And this one was taken out on the long area again, 20 and a half rod lengths. And um, it seems now every five or six bombs that go out, as long as they're accurate and the cast fuds down, then I'll get a bite really, really quickly. And they're the things you really need to pay attention to detail on. How does the drop feel? Has it gone onto the hard spot? Has it gone onto the clean spot? Maybe has it dropped in a bit of weed? Did the bomb go a little bit left of where it should have gone? All them things don't count. You have to keep doing it until you get it right. And then these things come along very soon after. Get in that net. Bosh, lovely. Nice carp that, very nice carp. There he is, the biggest one of the day so far. 20 pounds, 12 ounces. Absolutely solid as a rock, this one. I think we shall nickname him Solid. And if you're looking to fish this place on a budget, then look no further than pellet. Rather than spending 10 or 12 quid a kilo on boily, you can get pellet for a couple of quid a kilo. You can buy the stuff that they've been feeding them here as well. And um, putting that in, you know, you might use, I don't know, two, three kilos in a day. So it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. One little pot of IB pop-up soaked in isotonic goo, and you are away. And um, I look forward to meeting this guy again in the future, because um, it looks like another monster in the making.
So coming to Norton Disney, I only had one rig in my mind and that was a spinner rig. I've been using it for a couple of years now and my confidence in that rig is absolutely peak. I've not dropped any fish on that rig whatsoever with a size four Kamakura crank. Um, but on this session, I started off with a run of losses. And um, because of that, these I've noticed the fish in here have got quite soft mouths and they're quite young fish, so they're not really hardened up yet. So because of that, I went from the size four sharpened Kamakura down to a size six unsharpened. What I did with that as well, I just dropped my hook bait size to a 15 mil to a 12 mil, and that just balances the rig out that little bit better. Since I started to do that, I started to, conversion rate was getting much more fish on the bank, so it definitely worked in that respect. But again, this morning, I've had a flurry of action, um, but out of the five fish that I had takes on, I lost four of them in the weed. With them being a barbless suck on here, basically a lot of the time when they get in the weed, it's even if you keep the pressure on, they can use the weed to pivot around and basically shake the hook. Now, Lawrence has been fishing next to me and he's been fishing with a size four curve straight point and he's not lost that many fish today. So what I did, not silly, changed over to one of those and out of the eight bites I've had since, I've had seven on the bank out of the eight. So it's definitely worked and the change has paid off. I like the 25 pound, it works with a small crimp. I find it fairly indestructible anyway. It's a bit more minimalistic than the 35 pound. And because I'm not fishing in mega heavy weedy or snaggy conditions, the 25 pounds absolutely ample, no worries whatsoever. To that, I attach a standard spinner swivel. And on this session, I've ended up using the size four curve. And that's because of the straight point. The pop-ups themselves this session, I've definitely found that the yellows that I'm using are working better. I've been using those in the pineapple goo and the mystic spice goos as well, as well as the isotonics. I've been using the pinks and the oranges as well, and although I've been getting bites, as soon as the yellows have been going out there, I think the fish are seeing them quicker and snapping them. So yesterday went really well. Obviously in the morning, it started off quite slow for me, but as soon as I went a little bit further out, got amongst fish straight away and it was absolutely carnage with double takes, all rods off the rest at the same time and things like that. So another day of that would be nice, um, but I think what we're gonna do today is, yeah, we're gonna try and get to the magical 100 mark for bites, but I've, my approach, gone in with more boilies today just to try and sort out a bigger stamp of fish. If we can get 120 pounder between us, I think this session will be capped off perfectly and be a successful one. First bite of the day after refreshing everything about seven o'clock this morning. And it's about that same time as I had the bite yesterday, about half 10. Right, it's kiting right, so I'm gonna swap the rod over to the right and try and get it to come back left again. Oh, you I hate it when that happens. <sighs> There's nothing to really change at the moment. One hook pull doesn't really mean anything. If, uh, if it happens again, then uh, I might have to think about um, maybe a different pattern of hook. I know the boys over on Billy's um, lost a few on curved pointed hooks, and that's what I'm using, uh, a wide gate B. Um, the rule on here is barbless basically because there's so many different anglers are going to be turning up to this site with all different levels of uh, experience. If, um, if you allow barbed hooks, you will end up with loads of fish trading line where they're hooked and uh, the line gets cut or snaps or whatever, or somebody cracks off on the cast and leaves a live rig out there. And um, we know from Gigantica that um, we've got a barbless rule on there and have done since the word go and 10 years later our fish have still arguably got the best mouths of any sort of public water or any sort of uh, commercial water should i say in france um, so barbless hooks in my opinion do not cause more mouth damage um, yes they do tend to move a little bit in the mouth sometimes but i think that heals back up again um, so uh, that that is why the barbless rule is on here um, just so that fish can get off of a line um, you know, if it does snap for whatever reason or is left out in the lake from a cast. Um, so 
with all the fish being so nailed yesterday, I'm going to carry on with a size four wide gate B, um, see how we go from there. Um, if anything else comes off, then I might have a rethink. I know they've been using curved barbless over there and landing everything, and I know they did have hook pull problems at the start. So um, I've got some baits already tied on, um, ready to go onto a, a micro ring swivel. Um, so that one's ready to go out there again. I did have an occurrence on the right hand rod about half an hour ago that didn't develop, and um, it might have been a liner, but thinking about it now, it, it's probably a take because uh, nothing's happened on that rod since and then the other rod has then gone. So I'm going to redo both the rods. I put six bombs out first of the pellet, um, redo both the rods, just make sure the hooks are nice and sharp. I just took test the hook in the, in the back of my nail there. If it grips, then it's sharp and that's lovely. Um, and uh, yeah, just make sure everything's all cool get them back out on the money again and it does seem to be the middle of the day is the time on here so um, it's important to have things prepared ready to go so you can have rods in the water for the longest time possible in the middle of the day. Right let's get this out there. After a long period of no action from the lads on billies, Loz was in. It does seem that cooler temperatures and wet weather has affected the run rate on both lakes, but Loz has kept up the intensity and worked out how to carry on getting bites. I'll have a look at him, 18 pound 10. This fella's now the biggest of the session. We've had to wait a little while for this, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to worry a little bit, to be honest with you. We did put a lot of bait out this morning. I've tried different spots throughout the day. Um, I went onto a zig over the bait, for a couple of hours, nothing. I then moved my right hand rod down on the windward end of the lake, a couple of bombs over it, again, nothing. However, I did then see two fish over my spot. But I've already mentioned there's a little bit of a plateau out there and it goes from 15 foot up to nine. Now, when we had high pressure and clear skies yesterday, all the bites were coming from on top of it. And I just thought with having two on top and not one down the side in the deep water, now we've got all this low pressure, it's absolutely dreadful that maybe they might be down there feeding, but in the deeper water. So I've put the rig back down there within 45 minutes. This one's gone so It's worth persevering. This lake's got a lot of fishing. You need to keep changing your tactics and adapting. And hopefully this is a sign of things to come. Well, it's not been as productive today. I think me and Loz decided last night we're going to go with more of a bally approach today to try and single out a bigger fish. And because of that, I think the bites have slowed up a little bit. Um, the conditions have changed. It's hammering down with rain. It's been really persistent. It hasn't stopped. But that cool water going in, I'm pretty sure that's had some suit as well. But we're definitely picking out a better stamp of fish. And you can't really grumble with fish like this. Um, this was, again, taking on a nice fluorescent yellow pop-up on my trusted spinner rig and it's absolutely nailed, it was never ever coming off even though it went through a few wee beds on the way to the bank. Well, although the boiling approach has slowed up the bites a little bit, it's certainly producing the bigger ones. This one being my biggest fish of the session so far, and I must say so for myself, that it's a rate scaly banger. <laughs> oh. huh? Yeah, mate. So, day three. It's been tough, mate. Yeah, I know. It's been a lot more. It, it's been it's been hard work today. Yeah, the weather's been just unbearable at times. Mate, we, just, yeah, even in waterproofs, mate, yeah. it's been unbearable. Wet through, drown rats. Like, but, it's funny at the minute though, isn't it? Because like, with the summer we're having, 
seems to be the warmer it is, the more high pressure la lakes are just fishing. Yeah. But then you get like these little periods where well, you it think, looks absolutely perfect. Yeah, you think it'd do all it's right just today. the complete opposite. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, I think this morning we probably gave them a little bit too much bait. Too much bait, and I think the boilers as well. We, we, did, we did say we'd go for the out and out boil approach a little bit more to try and sort out a bigger fish. And we have yeah. definitely had a bigger stamp of fish today. Yeah. But I'd rather have had more quantity and try to work through them to get a bigger fish that way, yeah. I think. Um, yeah. I think that we've just got to hope they clear that bait. Wind swinging back around to Wesley in the face tomorrow. Yeah. Crack on a bit tomorrow. We'll go again. It's only no more yeah. rain and, and push on from there, I think. Yeah. And, we're not far off those 100 bites, are we? No, and we're not far off 20 pound now either, so. No. We're working away slowly but surely. We'll get there, mate. I think we'll get one chance. Yeah. A decent one. We'll get one chance. Last thing's last. Shall we uh, go and dry off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shower first? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> do it! I can't do it! <laughs> <laughs> Well, finally, it has stopped raining. I think it's rained for six hours, seven hours, maybe continuously, and uh, nothing's been going on. Seen a few fish uh, out when the wind was blowing over there, but uh, the wind's swung back in this direction. Maybe that's made a difference, I don't know. But, um, the long area is away. Isotonic pop-up again. This time you are mine. Get in that net. Bosh, got him. Oh, result. My third 20 of the session. Well chuffed with this one, completely out of the blue. And uh, I think the weather has made a difference today. All that rainwater going in has obviously cooled the water. Billy's has not fished well at all. I think the boys have only had eight or 10 bites on there, um, which is nothing by comparison to what they've had the couple of days previous. Tomorrow, the weather is gonna change again. It's gonna blow back westerly, straight into here. The sun's gonna come out again. The water will definitely warm up. And I suspect there'll be more bites tomorrow, but it just shows you on a lake that can be really productive in one set of conditions. You know, it changes a little bit and uh, the results slow down. And if, I, if I'd kept on working today and just kept spotting and recasting and everything else, I might not have caught anything. So sometimes all you need to do is sit on your hands. Well, it's the start of the last morning here on Norton Disney. We've had a great time to be fair. It's been action packed. Yesterday, not so much, but this morning started off pretty well with me and Loz having a few bites quite quickly after getting the rods out. Um, wind's back onto us now, so we're hoping the, the fish are gonna push back down in front of us and we can make the most of it and try and get near that 100 bites mark. Fish is trying to go for that island again. I'm trying to pull it back away. Just in some weed. By the time you watch this, uh, that little island that's given me problems will be gone. 
it's going to get dragged out by the uh, the uh, fishery management team here and we're going to rake it over and over again just to get all the root system off of that island uh, well it's bar actually rather than an island it's probably two or three foot deep they're going to break the bar up as much as they can so it doesn't cause people problems but for the moment it's a bit hairy <laughs> just keep the rod low now just try and keep the fish underneath the uh, the other lines that are out there it does appear that the wind swinging westerly back in my face has turned them on because this is the earliest bite i've had in the day just take my time now these these young fish have got soft mouths and you just got to be careful not to pull the hooks they will toughen up come on fella in you come yes got him oh, wicked absolutely wicked yeah man check that out another scraper 20 another absolutely beautiful fish and i'm pretty sure this one is from a different origin this came from rookley park i think which is down on the isle of Wight. they had to shut their syndicate down unfortunately for them but fortunately for us we bought the entire stock and some of the fish that went in here were over 30 pounds so we're expecting big things of those but this one in particular was probably an 18 pounder when it went in so it's putting on a couple of pounds for all the feeding and it just creates a real variety of fish in the lake and uh, you pretty much never know what you're going to get keeping the rod up at the moment just because these fish are tending to kite right and um, that little dot island can be problematic so I'm not pulling too hard at the moment just uh, just trying to lead it in doing a bit of a Damien Clark just tricking them into coming closer sometimes the harder you pull the harder they pull and they end up kiting severely one way or the other so just see how this works because the fish took a bit of line at the start and if it's gone further out and then it's kiting right which it is doing a little bit now I could have problems with that island so I'm just easing off just seeing if that just gets the fish to ease off as well just feel it going for a bit of weed there the downside of playing them with a rod up in the air they do tend to dive down deeper at times and uh, then you're in trouble with a weed feels like it's got weed around its head now it's not doing a lot I can feel the odd kick from the fish but it's gone heavier sometimes this can work in your favor where the, the head of the fish is covered and uh, it's not fighting that hard because it can't really see what's going on yeah see on the surface now big clump of weed with a fish behind it not ideal this having a big ball of weed just short of the fish but there's not really a lot i can do about it come on get in that net bosh got him excellent and that is a fully scaled 19 pounds of fully scaled perfection now they don't grow as fast as their scaleless cousins because they're obviously growing the scales as well but this will get there i'm sure it will get to 35 pound one day maybe even bigger and because we're stocking all the lakes every winter um, it basically upsets the hierarchy in the lakes and means the fish keep feeding because there's always new ones in there that don't know the drill and um, they come in and start feeding and the, uh, the residents that have been in for a few years have to feed as well to keep up and they carry on getting caught. The rig I'm using on this session is the Old Faithful Spinner Rig. I know we bang on about it all the time but it's just so versatile and so anti-tangle that that's why it gets used and uh, I started off I was going to fish PVA sticks on here uh, fish with tubing hybrid lead clip 
um, you know, quick change version so I could put the stick on the hook link easily. Um, but after the boys got so many problems with fishing bags, they were getting funny hook holds and dropping fish. They swapped over to pop-ups before I'd even started fishing. So I just went straight over to that. And um, the anti-tangle side of it is the most important thing. Watching a tiny little pop-up go out there, sort of 80, 90 yards is not easy. And um, often I lose it in the air and can't see whether it's all out straight and untangled or not. And you just know with a helicopter rig and a very stiff hook link like the boom material, it's just going out there untangled every single time. Leg core leaders I use are very short, um, basically because you don't need a long leg core leader. The, the longer the leader, the more ag they are to cast. And more importantly, if you snap up, the longer that, that hook link's got to travel up a leader to get off the top of it and the fish be free of it. And that's really, really important. You know, you need to be fishing a system where either the lead pops off the end or the bead pops off of the little collar so that the hook link can get off the other end of the lead core. Oh, little bleepage. Wind's really got up today. It looks absolutely banging now. Um, proper daytime conditions, nice strong westerly. Um, so, I'm, so I'm punching it out, 20 rod lengths into the wind. I've got three and a half ounce lead of pretty much any design, either a distance lead or a heli lead. And with the distance leads, I cut the swivel off um, so there's less pivot points down by the lead end. I want everything as sort of condensed as humanly possible. I'm using a heli safe and dumping the lead on the tape basically because it's so weedy out there. We've had the weed boat in here and it has cleared loads and loads of weed but um, there is still stuff out there and the fish are still getting caught in it. And if you dump the lead, the fish comes up in the water and it's much easier to play them in through all of the weed beds. My top bead is a little tiny no trace collar and that's set about a foot above the lead. So basically on the cast, the hook link slides up, hits that bead um, that's on top of the collar. Um, and as it goes down through the water, it, it stays up at that point and will basically, as it comes to rest, it will slide back down the lead core and find its position wherever is comfortable. So it's really good for fishing over little bits of straggly weed like I've got out there. If I was fishing on a really hard bottom, I knew it was completely clear, I would probably go over to a lead clip. But in this situation where I'm not entirely sure what it's landing on, I think a helicopter always sort of guarantees better presentation and the fish being able to get the bait in its mouth is the most important thing. Helicopter rigs I don't think are quite as good for the hooking potential, but just having it all sitting there pretty on the bottom, you know, is paramount. And then the hook link itself, I'm using 25 pound boom. I've crimped it at either end, and we still get loads of people come to us saying they're struggling with the crimping system. It's so, so easy. It's like a double barrel crimp. Go through this one side of it with the boom, through your swivel or, or your, your spinner swivel, um, and then back through the other side pull it all up nice and tight that creates more friction and gives you a better breaking strain and then you just put it into the jaws of the crimp so the two barrels are basically sitting in the little grooves in the jaws top and bottom and then just squeeze it down and if you don't get it right it will pull apart really easily if you do get it right which is really easy to do you can pull it as hard as you want and you will not be able to snap it so i've crimped onto a size 11 ring swivel that's running up and down the leg core leader and then at the other end i've got a spinner swivel which is specially designed to make the hook really easy to get on it's just a rounded crook. You haven't got to open it up like the old quick chain swivels. Um, it just slides on there really easily. And to keep it on, you can either put a bit of shrink tube over it, or I use a medium kicker. I just cut a little bit off the bottom of it, slide it onto the hook, and um, basically just cover up that join. Gives a nice little angle, so it's sort of kicked over like a claw. So the hook's in the prone position to catch the flesh. Um, and then the bait goes on. I'm using a micro ring swivel. I'm just pulling a 12 mil pop up little tiny specially made one that I've got done by Mainline. It's an IB pop-up with isotonic goo on it. Um, that's getting, getting pulled onto a bit of bait floss, pulled down onto the swivel, cut the end off and just burn it, just press it down with the lighter and there's no way that's gonna come off. Once the ring slid onto the hook, then just one of the little hook bead goes on, just put the point of the hook through that carefully, making sure you don't touch the point, it's really important, and slide it round so it's sort of at the top of the shank. I like it sort of sitting so the hook's sort of cocked over like a claw. And then hook-wise, because we've got a barbless rule on here, I've been using wide gate bees, and what I do is I gently intern the eye of the hook a little bit more, again to help that angle so it's cocked over a bit more. Um, and I think that just creates more secure hook holds. A size four, I think it's important to use a bigger hook, especially when you're playing fish through heavy weed. Um, and I have also moved over to curve shanks in the barbless as well, particularly the, today. The two fish I've had this morning have both been on curve shanks. Um, they've both been absolutely nailed. The system is exactly the same, set up exactly the same. And the boys over there were using curve shanks and landing virtually everything. And that's what made me try them today. So 
any pattern of hook with an in-turned eye will work on the spinner rig. Um, you just need to make sure that, that that hook bead is right up the hook at the very top of the shank so it sits over properly. Um, once I get a bite, just slide the hook bait off. If there's nothing wrong with the hook bait, I'll reuse it. You slide up the kicker out of the way, take the hook off, clip another one on, kicker back over the top of it. You can slide the same bait back on again, another bead on, and you're ready to go. So it's basically a rig that presents the hook bait really close to the lake bed. It does seem to be the fish are preferring really small hook baits. It never ever tangles, and in fishing in this situation over a big bed of pellet, I think it's just drawing the fish's attention that little bit quicker, and the bites are coming thick and fast. Well, hey. Summon on. Right, near to there, 99. I believe in it there, I think. That's I know, I'm so tired, mate. Well, how's that for number 100? Mate, it'll do, won't it? Yeah, I'm, uh, it's been one hell of a session, mate, hasn't it? Mate, start to finish, it's been great fun. But... There, there were times when I thought we were going to struggle to actually hit that mark. Yesterday, it was, gonna look, it was looking like we were going to struggle, definitely, but we've definitely put it out of the bag this morning. It's, um, Carnage, yeah, it's been carnage at times, been steady as well, but I think I don't think we were too confident waking up this morning and it was a fairly slow start to be fair, but once we got them on the bait it started. It's just about working it, isn't it? Yeah. Chopping and changing. And uh, yeah, eventually you can get amongst them. Yeah. You've just got to work hard at it, but I think it's time to slip this fella back, hit the road and get home. Yeah. So I'm ready. I'm knackered, mate. Let's do it. Good effort. Right then, son. I think you owe me uh, 20 boys. Mate, to be fair, <laughs> that's a bet and all that. And I did think I was going to do him a big fish. He was close, but he did do me, so. Uh, I, I was close. Bet is a bet. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> I owe you. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, mate. Hold on, mate. Is that the fee tuition, yeah? Yes, mate. Right, yeah, yeah. The biggest lesson learned for me um, is that the fish are, on this particular lake on Pettits are highly nomadic. When the wind changes, the fish move with it and if you want to keep catching all the way through, if there are swims available on the wind and you're not getting bites, definitely move over there. The biggest highlights for the session for me um, were the fish, you know, just absolutely stunning carp after stunning carp. We wanted to be social, we've not really been social because we've all been catching them, so, um, you know, I wanted to, to sort of spend a bit more time with everybody and I've not really done it because I've had my fishing head on. Um, so fishing that, that super sort of active style, Fishing really accurate, catching really lovely fish, that's been the highlight. Norton Disney's going to open with two lakes that comprises of 45 acres of water with 35 swims on it, so there's loads of space. That was really, really important that we opened somewhere that gave every angler some room to manoeuvre. Um, and uh, this place certainly does that. The lakes that are opening in 2020 are turners at the back of the complex. Uh, we've got to drop the level there by four feet because um, it's come up a lot over the course of this summer put all the swims in, um, that's already got 600 fish in it. We're putting more in this winter as we are in all of the lakes. Um, and then the other two are gonna be Holden's, which is right at the back of the complex. That's 10 acres, 
We suspect that's probably going to have a thousand fish in it when it opens, so it's going to be ideal for the sort of person that just wants to come and get a bite, hasn't done a lot of carp fishing before. It's a sort of starter water, if you like. And then the other one, Dabons, is going to be a bit like Petted, so a much lower stock. That one's about 12 acres. We might open with 150, 200 fish in there, but they will be a bigger average size, probably all around the 20 pound mark, with some fish going up to 35 pound, hopefully. And then the last one, we still haven't decided. We're going to make a couple of stock ponds at the top of it. We don't know whether it's going to be a specimen lake for tench or whether it's going to be another carp water. Um, but certainly by September, October of 2020, there will be five carp lakes open for business. Well, talk about save the best till last. Look at that absolute minger. Another 20 pounder. My 10th fish from Pettits in three days fishing. The boys over on Billy's have done absolutely brilliantly, getting over 100 bites between them. And I think with Katie as well, we've all shown this place in the absolute best light possible. You know, the future is very, very bright for Embryo Norton Disney. I'm very proud of what the guys here have achieved in a very short space of time. And I'm sure there will be lots of anglers coming down here and enjoying these amazing, amazing carp, just like we have over the last few days. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the bank sometime.